Hello everyone, and welcome to the 41st episode of Don't Forget the Popcorn. Like last month, I will be going over briefly everything I watched this past month in May. Quick overview on whether I recommend it or not, and a score. Now this month I'm a little lighter than last because I went to Vegas for a little, so I didn't get as many in, but I still got plenty for you. So let's just hop right in. Barbarella, 1968, directed by Roger Vadim. This film, Jane Fonda movie, little uh, kind of stylized weird sci-fi film, but it's actually quite cool. Uh, I dig it a lot. I'm a huge Jane Fonda fan, so I loved it, and um, she looks absolutely stunning in it. So uh, if you're a Jane Fonda fan, you'll love it. If you like kind of older, you know, silly-looking sci-fis, You'll like it. Um, I would give it, you know, probably a solid seven. Um, I would recommend it to to, to Fonda fans and deep sci-fi fans, but it's definitely not one for everyone. Cowboy Bebop the Movie, 2001, directed by Shinichiro Watanabe. Okay, this movie, if you know what Cowboy Bebop the anime is, it's just, you know, an extension of the story, essentially. And it's badass. It's awesome. Love, love, love this movie. Love, love, love the anime. Um, this film is great. There's some great action scenes in it. Spike is going hard. Ed is adorable as ever. Faye is being Faye as usual. She's slick and fun as always. So if you are definitely an anime fan, a Bebop fan, absolutely recommend it. I would give this a solid 8.8. Zack and Mary make a porno directed by Kevin Smith, 2008. Okay, now I've seen this movie before, but it had been a long time. This movie is freaking hilarious, you know. Um, Seth Rogen and uh, what's her freaking name? Uh, she she does a lot of directing now. She just directed Cocaine Bear. Um, Elizabeth Banks. I don't know why I was missing me. She uh, she, they, these two they had great chemistry. They're funny. They're uh, they're they're trying to pay their bills. And they're broke, and they're just best friends, so they decide, hey, let's make a porno and sell it for money so they can pay their bills. Um, This movie's great. It's hilarious. You know, for comedy fans, if you're a fan of Kevin Smith or Seth Rogen, you will like this film. Um, I would definitely recommend this to most people. Most people would get a kick out of this as long as you like raunchy humor, you know. This was a film that came out, you know, back in the the golden era of comedy. So I would give this film a 7.2. Autumn Sonata, 1978, directed by Ingmar Bergman. Guys, you've heard me talk about this guy before. One of the best directors ever. One of my personal favorites. This movie was absolutely brilliant. Um, A crazy story about, you know, a bad relationship between a mother and a daughter. And, you know, the what comes out in this movie you got and first of all you got the collaboration between ingmar bergman and ingrid bergman so this here you finally get this two of legends from sweden that took so long in their careers to collaborate which is just insane to me and it makes me so sad that it took them so long this movie is brilliant it's a masterpiece um i would give this movie a solid nine and i would i i would have to recommend this if you like hard-hitting dramas and deep family dramas i would recommend this to you true grit 2010 directed by the cohen bros now i've seen this movie too but just like the other one it's been a while Man, this movie's awesome, man. I forgot how good this was. Um, I think I actually like this one more than the original. Got to rewatch that. Um, You get a great performance from Jeff Bridges, great performance from Matt Damon. And um, the young girl in this movie, she is great. uh, Her name is missing me. She's been in a lot of stuff since this, but she was absolutely phenomenal in this movie. Uh, If you like Westerns, honestly, this is a Western that anyone could get on board with. I would absolutely recommend this to pretty much anyone. Um, I would give this movie a a solid like 8.5. It's a great film. True Lies. 1994, directed by James Cameron. Okay, I know a lot of people will like this movie. I don't like this movie. 
I thought it was so corny and just, I don't know. It just is definitely not one of my favorite Arnold Cameron collabs. It definitely ain't the Terminator. You know, it's got its moments and you get a great strip tease from Jamie Lee Curtis, who I did not know had so much sex appeal potential, but yeah, that part's pretty cool. But you know, it has its moments. It's funny at times, but the story's really silly and it's just, it's a little kind of still over the top for me, but not in a good way. So, um, I would give this movie like a, like a, like a, like a 5.8 or a six. Um, I would recommend this to Arnold Schwarzenegger fans. I wouldn't even recommend this to like James Cameron fans because this one feels like, to me personally, it feels out of place in his filmography. Ninja Scroll, 1993, directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri. Now, this anime movie is freaking fire, man. Just a dope bang em up anime action film with some gritty, crazy stuff in it. One of those dark, gritty, twisted early 90s, like just throwback style anime movies, you know, like for fans of like Fist of the North Star and like anime movies like that, man. If you like them type of anime movies, you will love this movie. I would give this movie like an 8.7, man. I love this film, it's awesome. Daisies, 1966, directed by Vera Shitilova. Um, this film, I was very, very excited to watch. It's a, it's a Czech Republic film, I believe, and it's about two chicks who they feel like everyone is spoiled and they should be spoiled as well, and so they just kind of, it's kind of just them going around you know, swindling dudes for dinners and like just, you know, indulging in life and all the pleasures it has to offer. They just kind of do whatever they want. This film has no plot. This film really isn't about anything. It's really just watching these two interesting chicks hang out. And I did like this film. I didn't love it. I did think I was going to like it more than I did. You know, um, I, I would give this film... I would give it a 7.4 um, because it was good. And I do think it has its place, um, you know, to be discussed in the great films of the 60s. Um, but I didn't think it was mind blowing. And I would only I would only recommend this to some deep, deep cinephiles, you know, um, foreign language film. So, you know, you take that with you know, how you want it. The Magnificent Seven, 1966, directed by John Sturges. Okay, this movie, it's not a bad film, okay? And I know it's looked at as one of the great westerns. And it is a good film. I enjoyed it for the most part. But it's based, you know, it's pretty much a retelling of Akira Kurosawa's The Seven Samurai, which is, in my opinion, and most, you know, film publications' opinion, one of the best movies ever made. And this film just, it just made me want to watch The Seven Samurai. Um, And that's not a bad thing per se. And I think the acting was good in this movie. And I do think, you know, some of the changes were cool. But I mean, it's really the same story, just with cowboys instead of samurais. And if you're a Western fan who's never seen The Seven Samurai, you'll love this movie. You'll think this movie's great. But if you've seen The Seven Samurai, you watch this afterwards, I just, I'm not sure you're gonna, you're just gonna be thinking about how great The Seven Samurai was because that movie is truly something special. So I would definitely recommend this to Western fans without a doubt. But for me, I'm gonna give this movie a seven. South Paul, 2015, directed by Antoine Fuqua. Now, I do like Antoine Fuqua. He, he's directed some really good movies in the past few years. And I think he gets very overlooked. And I think he's quite underrated. I think people don't give him enough credit. Uh, and this film, although it is cliche, it's, you know, we've, we've seen this type of story a bunch of times. Antoine's direction and Jake's performance, Jake Gyllenhaal, it carries this film and makes it very compelling. 
I, I'm not gonna lie. I got emotional watching this movie. I had a couple tears shed. It's a, it's, it's one of those really, you know, hard hitting sports dramas. I, I actually enjoyed this film quite a bit. It's not a perfect movie. It's not gonna. It didn't change the game. It didn't reinvent the wheel or do anything like that. But it was an enjoyable watch, and I would definitely recommend this movie to most average movie watchers. I think your average movie fan would love this film. So I would give South Paul. You know, honestly, I'm going to give it like a 7.3. You know, I think it was a good film. I enjoyed it a lot. It's not a perfect film, but I do think it is absolutely worth a watch. This next one here, The Holy Mountain, 1973, directed by Alejandro Hodorowski. Okay, guys, I, I want to take just a little bit of time to talk about this film. Just a second and hear me out, please. I went into this film... I went into this film and director just reading about him and hearing about him. And I was not familiar with his work at all. And I went into this film with a very already kind of, you know, predetermined opinion. And I kind of had it in my head that I wasn't going to like this film. And I avoided this film for quite some time. And I watched someone review this director and... They made me say, F it, I'm going to go ahead and watch this film. And I'm really upset with myself that I waited so long to watch this film. Alejandro Hodorowski is a mother genius. This film was brilliant. The art that was on display, the symbolisms littered through the film that just... Just the craft of filmmaking on display here is something like I've never seen before. And I've seen quite a bit of films, guys. I've seen weird films, avant-garde art house films to the biggest blockbusters from all around the world, from all time periods. And I have never seen a movie like this. This shit blew me away, guys. The Holy Mountain is a film that I can't even really describe. It is just something you must experience for yourself. Having said all that and talking this talking his praises, I absolutely could not recommend this film to anyone. This is one for film lovers. This is a movie lovers movie. This is someone, this is for people who really appreciate art. This is for fashion lovers. This is for this is for people who who likes to see stuff, who likes their mind blown a little bit, because there's some stuff in this freaking movie you're going to be like, what the F am I watching, man? And it's absolutely beautiful and amazing. So with that, I have to give The Holy Mountain a a solid 10 out of 10, man. It's a, it's a masterpiece. But I can't say to watch it for everyone. Wolf Children, 2012. Directed by Mamoru Hosoda. Now, I've been watching a ton of this dude's movies, man. A ton. Um, this was one of his best films. I think this and probably Summer Wars are his two best movies that I've seen so far. I really enjoyed this movie. This movie's about a mother who falls in love with a man who's like half wolf. And they have children. And their children are like half wolf. But they can turn it on and off. And... It's about it's a story about this mother struggling to raise these children and these two children are growing up and they are very, very different. And it's just really cute and cool to see their lives and how it pans out. It was a great film. I really enjoyed this movie. I could recommend this film to anyone, obviously anime fans, but you know, this is a really great anime film. So I wouldn't give Wolf Children a solid 8.2. Beverly Hills Cop, 1984, directed by Martin Brest. Now, Beverly Hills Cop, I had seen this a long, long time ago as a kid, but I just, you know, I was like, I got to re rewatch this. And it was absolutely great. A great buddy cop film. You know, Eddie Murphy, this was prime, prime Eddie Murphy. He was at the top of his game. He was hilarious. You know, this is a fun movie. If you like fun 
comedy action movies if you like 80s movies this is definitely one you'll love you've probably already seen it if you like 80s movies like that this was a very big film when it came out um you know it was before my time but man it's it's a classic i i, I definitely love this film uh so i recommend this to anyone honestly i'm gonna give beverly hills cop a 7.5 Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie, 1992, directed by Fran Rubo Kazoo. I think I said it right. Okay, I went into this movie thinking it was going to be really dumb and really bad, which it was in all the right ways. This movie was fun. It was great. Uh, Christy Swanson, gorgeous woman, killed this role. I really liked her in it. Um... Donald Sutherland, man, going hard, Luke Perry. Uh, it's it's an interesting cast. A lot of young faces for they blew up. You got a young Hillary Swank, young David Arquette. You got a lot of young guys before they really took off in their careers. And, you know, it's just a fun little high school movie, even though, you know, I love vampire movies, even though this is kind of an anti-vampire movie. Still was funny, had a lot of fun with it. Uh, you know, it, it's definitely got the cult following it does for a reason. Uh I would definitely recommend this to, you know, 90s high school movie fans. If you like 90s high school films, you, I th do think you would like this. Uh, I would give Buffy a 6.6. .6. The Fountain, 2006, directed by Darren Aronofsky. One of my favorite directors of this century, man. Um, I'm a big Aronofsky fan. And I know a lot of people don't like him, and I know he gets criticized a lot. People say he's over pretentious, and people try and, you know, they say he's not as smart as he thinks, and he's not as edgy as he thinks, and, you know, his movies aren't as deep as he thinks they are. Um, I found this film extremely deep. I found this film to be very moving, very compelling. It's gorgeous. It's a great story about, you know, trying to save your loved one. It's just... It's a beautiful film, and it's extremely well acted. Hugh Jackman, mind blowing. Um, Rachel Wise, mind blowing. Some good acting in here, and and you know, Aronofsky pulled his girl Ellen Burstyn out and put her in this. It's always great to see her. She's brilliant. Um, I absolutely would recommend this movie to anyone. Is it a weird one? Yes, it's an Aronofsky film, but it's visually striking. It grips you emotionally. It put it put. Put water in my eyes. It did. I, I absolutely adored this film. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I thought it was, honestly, it's borderline a masterpiece. It's it's insane. It's an insane film, and I, I I think it's I think it's one everyone should check out at least once. So I'm gonna give the fountain. I'm gonna give the fountain an eight point seven. The Beguiled, 1971, directed by Don Segal. Clint Eastwood movie. Uh, Clint plays a, a, a Union soldier in the Civil War, and he ends up getting wounded and getting taken in by a house full of women. And the, and the house is a school, and it's ran by, um, you know, an older woman. And then, you know, her next in line is, is a younger chick. Oh, she's probably supposed to be like mid-20s or something. And this movie was absolutely great. I loved it. It's crazy. Clint Eastwood, I, I, it's a different role for him. I liked it. He went in here and, man, he really stirred up this house with these girls, man. Because, you know, Clint, you know Clint back in the day, super handsome, charismatic, and he plays that out in this movie. And all the girls, of course, fall for him. And it's it's a fun movie, and it gets dark, man. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy little, like... It's a slightly erotic thriller, you know. It's but it's like a western too. It's 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 weird. It's but it's cool, man. I really really liked it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I would recommend this to anyone. I think everyone would get something out of this film. There's a lot of themes in it. I would give The Beguiled a solid eight. Shame, 2011, directed by Steve McQueen. Now, this is uh, Steve McQueen and Michael Fassbender. They've worked together a lot. You know, they did this. They did 12 Years of a Slave. They did The Hunger. Um, you know, they've, they've done a lot of work together. Steve McQueen loves Michael Fassbender. I love Michael Fassbender. Um, you know, he is awesome. I love him. Um, thought he killed it as Steve Jobs, you know. 
I freaking loved him and and Glorious Bastards. Even though he's not in it a lot, just what he does for that for that short time he's in it is just great. And of course, I love him in Prometheus. I love Michael Fassbender. He's the guy. X Men, you know, come on. But this movie, man. This might be his best role. This might be his best role. And I think he killed it in 12 Years a Slave, too. But, man, man, this this film here, Shame, is a crazy character study about a sex addict. And I tell you what, this movie, look, any guys out there who think they have, you know, a problem in this department, watch this film. It'll probably make you feel a lot better about yourself because this film goes there. It goes there and... I, I would have to recommend this to everyone. And it's not for everyone, but I think everyone should definitely check it out. It's a really cool film. Um, I'm going to give Shame 7.8. Beverly Hills Cop 2. 1987, directed by Tony Scott. Um, a continuation of the story. You know, uh, this movie, it, it didn't get the, the critical love and praise that the first one did but dude this one's i think this one's just as good as the first one if not maybe a little bit better um i don't understand why it didn't get the love of the first one did. i think this is honestly one of tony scott's better films this movie's funny as hell it's eddie murphy at the at the top top of his game and i had a great time with it it's another just great 80s buddy cop action film and it's funny I would give Beverly Hills Cop 2 like a 7.5 as well. Pearl, 2022, directed by, I think it's Ty West, or I don't know if it's T West. Hey, Pearl Man, if you saw X, you know, this is the prequel to X. Um, and you, it, it's Pearl is cool because it's just a character study about, you know, a woman who really craves a Hollywood lifestyle. And, you know, she's a little off. And I got to say, Mia Goth, I've liked what I've seen from her so far, but I think this just really put her on my radar, man. She she really delivered some, a nice performance in this movie. Honestly, I think she might have got snubbed for an Oscar nom, bro. I think she really she really made this movie. If it wasn't for her, this movie would have sucked. Um, she killed this movie, and she made it pretty good film. I enjoyed this more than X. I really did. I thought it was more original. You know, I thought it was just I thought it was just a better story, and I thought. You know, everything just clicked a little better in this than X. X. X to me was, it was good, but it just feels a lot like Texas Chainsaw. So I'm going to give Pearl a solid 7.4. And I'm going to give Mia Goss performance, though, like a solid 9. She was amazing. And I would recommend this to anyone, especially horror fans. Most people, they can get down with a good horror film. I would definitely recommend this. Lahane. 1995, directed by Matthew Kasovitz. Okay, this movie here, this, this, okay, I'm going to keep this brief. I'm not going to tell you, this is a great movie, and this movie is very, very relevant to today still, and it's crazy. This is a film about police brutality in France, though. This is a French film, and it's really cool to see the other side of what the other what the other part of the world is going through with their cop issues because i believe excuse me i believe these events don't quote me but i believe these events are based on something that actually happened in france back then so i'm gonna tell you right now this is one this is one of the best films i've ever watched it's funny as hell it's it grips you it has great characters the direction's great you know Beautiful cinematography, great soundtrack, great score. You know, it's, oh, everything works so well. The chemistry between the three leads. Guys, this movie blew my mind. And the end, the very end is like, what the, man, oh my Lord, this movie. I really enjoyed this film a lot, and this is one I would recommend this film to absolutely anyone. Um, guys, you got to start watching foreign language films. I can't stress that enough. That is very important, guys. Do not be shot away because you have to read the movie, okay? After, if the movie's good, you, you forget you're reading it. Um, trust me, guys. 
this film, Lahane, is amazing, okay? And I'm going to give this movie its masterpiece level for me. I'm going to give this a solid 9.5. The End of Evangeline, 1997, directed by Hideaki Yano and Kazuya Tusamaki. This is a cool anime movie now. It, there's a show. I didn't watch the show, okay? Um, I didn't. And the reason I didn't watch it was because everything I heard about it, it made me like, oh, it made me not want to watch it. But apparently this movie is the ending to the show that should have been. And, you know, so I was like, I'll check this out and just, you know, just see what it is. And holy hell, this movie is crazy, man. This film is violent as hell. It's fun. It's it's gripping. Now, because I didn't watch the show, there was some aspects for me that I was a little bit confused on, but it really didn't take away from what, what I was seeing in front of me. It was it was pretty breathtaking. It was awesome. I, I really did have fun with it. And it had some really cool characters that you can get on board with really fast. It's not a long movie. It's very short. And you get on board with these characters really quick, man. And you're like, you start feeling for them fast. And it's just a crazy movie about like, really, there's these, it's kind of hard to explain. There's these like robot things and people control them and they're fighting these other, like, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, you got to just check it out. I think it's it's on Netflix. Just check it out. Um, I would give this film, I'll give this an 8. I'll give this an 8. Maybe even 8.1 or 2. Um, I would check this out, guys, for sure. Blazing Saddles. 1974, directed by Mel Brooks. Guys, we I've seen this before. I, I know all of you guys have probably seen this movie. It's been a while, though, so I wanted to revisit it. Still holds up, still funny as ever. Oh, I still hate the ending, though. The, it gets really sloppy at the end, but it still holds up. Great film. You know, racy, racist, you know, fun humor that we will never have again. This movie can never be made again. Um, and what's great about this film, though, is, you know, yes, there's racist jokes and stuff in it. But everyone gets made fun of. No one gets spared. Like, every race gets made fun of in this movie one way or another. No one gets spared. It's like South Park, you know. South Park gets away with it because, you know, they everyone gets it. No one is safe. And that's what's great about Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles is fun. You just It just embraces funny stereotypes, guys. And you just have to learn to watch a movie like this and enjoy it for what it is, a film. Don't take it too serious. You know, just don't. It's a great film. Uh, I would definitely recommend this to people who like racy humor. I'm going to give Blazing Saddles for its legacy and, you know, its lasting impact. I'm going to give Blazing Saddles a 7.8. Super Mario Brothers, 2023, directed by Aaron Horvath and Michael Jelinek. Shocker of the year for me so far. This movie was absolutely fun. Is it is it is it something that is changing the game that's just you know reinventing the genre? No, but here we go again. We got The Last of Us earlier this year, they got a video game adaptation right, and now we got this, they got a video game adaptation right, and we got Sonic. Video game movies are they're starting to make their way now, and it's really cool. This movie was funny, it was great. And Jack Black, you my guy, bro. Come on. I know everybody. Peaches, 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 peaches. Like, I, I was singing that crap for like three days after I watched this movie. Um, it's a great film. All the voice actors were A1. I think everyone played their role well. You know, it's one you can watch by yourself. You can watch with your kids. Great film. You'll absolutely love it. I would give this, give Mario a solid 7.3. Renfield, 2023, directed by Chris McKay. Um, this movie was another shocker. Now, I wouldn't say this was as good as Mario or anything. Um, you know, it had its cheesiness to it. it. You know, it definitely, you know, it fell flat at times. But the action was good, and Nicolas Cage was great, as always. Um, Nicolas Cage, yet again, 
steals the show. He's a great Dracula. I love him. Um, this was a fun movie. It was shocking, you know, shockingly fun. Uh, I love Aquafina. I thought she was good. She was a nice addition to the role. Um, I have a lot of issues with it, though, so it's not a perfect film. But, you know, for people who like vampire movies or, you know, just gory action films, I'll recommend this to you. So I would give Renfield a 6.7. Ran. 1985, directed by Kira Kurosawa. Um, this is an absolute masterpiece. It's Kurosawa. It was like his last big film. He was going blind when he made this movie, and he made a masterpiece. Um, my only issue with this film is the actor who plays um, the one, the one husband sister's brother, or sorry, his uh, the main dude, his one son. His chick, her brother, is a dude who lives in a hut and, like, plays a flute. And later on in the movie, you see him, like, walking, and he's, like, like by, like by on a cliff, basically. And this dude looks like a freaking puppet. And it's, like, it just kind of threw me off. And I just really want to know if it was a puppet because I feel in my heart that it was. But, hey, this movie was fire, fire, fire. Uh, I'm going to give Ran a... I mean, it's hard not at least a nine, a nine. I'll give Rand a nine out of 10. And I would recommend this to, if you like samurai movies, absolutely. Zodiac, 2007, directed by David Fishner. Come on, man, it's Fishner. You got Jake Gyllenhaal, Mark Ruffalo, Robert Downey. Movie goes hard. Great little, you know, murder mystery story that, you know, about guys who let this, this case drive them insane. And, you know, this movie was just great. And I think it's just the film that got overlooked in the shuffle with, you know, There Will Be Blood and No Country and stuff. But great, great film. If you like murder mysteries, absolutely recommend this. It's Finchner because uh, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this an 8.3. Blow, 2001, directed by Ted Demi. I love Blow. Seen this before. Been a long time, though. Wanted to check it out again. Still holds up, man. Penelope Cruz gives a great performance. Johnny Depp, of course, gives a great performance. I uh, really enjoy this film. It's a classic. I think you know, it's it's like it's up there with like Fear and Loathing in the cult classics range. Um, absolutely recommend this movie to anyone. You know, it's just a fun drug movie, a drug story movie. Rise and fall, you know. Um, I'll give blow give blow a eight. Air. 2023 directed by ben affleck all right man this was another another shocker i thought it would be good but i didn't think it would be this good now of course this movie is a definite commercial for nike it's a nike vehicle it plays in their favor all that there you know people who have their criticisms with the the business and the uh the more uh kind of commercialized aspect of this film but this movie is good, man. It's got great performances. Great performances. Ben Affleck, love him, man. He kills it in this. Acting and directing. And Matt Damon, of course, is great. Nice to see Chris Tucker giving a good performance. Guys, this movie, I'll recommend this to anyone. This is Viola Davis gives a great performance. It's it's a simple film with a great soundtrack, with a story we know how it ends, yet it still keeps you on the edge of your seat. I'm gonna give a, a I'm sorry, I'm gonna give air an eight. Actually, scratch that. I'm going to give Air 8.3. Batman, 1989, directed by Tim Burton. Another one I've seen before, but it's been a long, long, long time since I've seen this one. Still holds up, man. Still holds up after all this time. You know, Burton kind of set a bar with this movie. And, you know, the bar has been hit and raised since then, but... He set a nice standard for us to go off of with Batman movies for the future, you know, going into the 90s and 2000s. So this is a good film. You get a great performance from, of course, Jack Nicholson. And I think a very underweighted Bruce Wayne performance from Michael Keaton. And, of course, you got the gorgeous Kim Basinger back, there, back then. You know, she, she, she's great as always. Uh, fun movie, man. I liked it. Uh, I Obviously, if you're a hero fan, I'll recommend this to you. So I'm going to give Batman a 7.8. Wonder Woman, 
Vicky Cristina Barcelona, directed by, or sorry, 2008, directed by Woody Allen. Uh, I've seen this movie before as well, um, but I forgot I watched it until I started watching it, then clicked. I remember the entire thing, and I got really excited because I was like, oh man, I really like this film when it came out. Uh, this is a great movie, man. It's a cool story about, it's almost like a, it's a love, tri- it's like two separate love triangles almost. It's weird. Um, Javier Bardem pretty much comes in here and gets three gorgeous women all on him, man. And it's crazy. You got, dude, he has a love triangle. He's dating, he's in a relationship with Penelope Cruz, who's his actual wife, and Scarlett Johansson. And he has both of them at the same time. Like, can you guys imagine that? Any men out there watching, or women even, you know, you, you guys imagine that? Both of them in 2008, crazy, right? Fun movie, man. It's cool. It's Woody Allen film. If you like Woody Allen films, you will like this movie. Um, I'm going to give Vicky Cristina Barcelona. I'm going to give this film a score that people probably would say is a little um, high for this movie. But I, I'm going to give it an 8. I enjoyed it a lot. Night of the Comet, 1984, directed by Thom Ebernhardt. This movie's great. This movie's great. 80 sci-fi kind of um i guess it's kind of a horror film in a way yeah it's not that scary you know it's really not scary at all but it's just a, it's it's more like a it's more dystopian sci-fi horror film kind of but it's a it's a fun one man you got you got these fun chick character leads in it and you know the chick regan the main character she goes hard it's like a comet comes down and if you were in if you were in the right type of metal when it happened and you weren't exposed to it, you lived. If not, you turn to dust and it's kind of just like a, like a post apocalyptic, almost survival film. It's, it's cool. It's a fun one. You know, uh, it's just a dope little eighties film. Not, a, not, a, you know, it didn't change the game or it's, but it's fun. It's, it holds up pretty well, I think to this day. And there's some cool stuff in it. Fun quotes. I would recommend this for sure to eighties fans. And I'm going to give night of the comet a seven. D&D, Dungeons and Dragons, 2023, directed by my man, John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein. Uh, D&D was, was way better than it probably should have been. I didn't love it, but I did like it, and I had fun with it. I laughed. You know, it's a blockbuster. It's a fun little action blockbuster. I really like Chris Pine in it. I love Chris Pine. thought Michelle Rodriguez was great. I thought the whole cast was pretty good, actually. Um, every Everyone played their part really well. The film works, you know. If you're a fan, if if you're a fan of, you know, D and D style stuff and action comedies, it's well, it's for you. It's a watch. You know, anyone could get, anyone could watch it and enjoy it for what it is. So, I'll give D and D also. I will give that a seven. The Lobster, 2015, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos. Now, this is one of those films that. I didn't love, but there was a lot of things I did love about it. But overall, I won't say it fully clicked for me. I love the world that was built. I love the dystopian nature. I love the concept of it, of if you don't find love in a certain time, you turn into an animal of your choosing. That's just weird and cool. Like, who would think of that? You know, it's just, it's very, it's just something interesting. It's an interesting concept. I do think it was, um, I think the film, it misled me. I thought it was going to be a lot different than it was. And then as it as it was, I was enjoying it. And the more it went on, the less I started to enjoy it. I thought Colin Farrell gave a great performance. I thought Rachel Wise gave a great performance. I'm watching a lot of her movies lately. Um, I think, oh, John C. Riley gives a nice little performance. There was some stuff in it that I liked, but overall, it really bugged me the way it ended. And, and I thought it was kind of stupid and it didn't make any sense to me why it ended that way. And you know, and if you've seen this movie and you like it and you you got an explanation, go ahead, throw it down in the comments. I'm all ears. But I can't say I would recommend this movie to most people. Um, I'll give the lobster a six. Metropolis, 2001, directed by Kachiro Otomo. 
This is an anime movie. Um, and now this is not a direct remake of Metropolis. It has elements like the film Metropolis, the silent film, Fritz Lang. And it's pretty cool. Uh, I thought this movie was going to be better than it was. It was good. It was a fun little interesting story. You know, it had, I like the the two kids in it and that aspect of it was cool. But everything else that was going on around that storyline, that arc, I really could care less for. But it had some interesting characters and stuff in it. You know, um, I can't say I could recommend this to everyone. Anime fans, yes, that's about it. Uh, but I'll give it a 6.8. You know, it was a good watch. Lethal Weapon. Directed by Richard Donner, 1987. All right. Been on my Richard Donner. Lethal Weapon's great, man. Buddy cop stuff. I've been on that. I get on kicks, as you guys see. Uh, Lethal Weapon. You know, I, I swore I'd seen Lethal Weapon when I was a kid. But when I watched it, man, I was like, I don't remember a dang thing about this movie. So Lethal Weapon is fun. You get everyone knows the story. You get two good performances from Danny Glover and um Mel Gibson, they had great chemistry in this one. And, you know, it's just a fun buddy cop movie, but it's actually quite deep and quite dark for um, a film of this caliber. And we're going to talk about Lethal Weapon 2 in a second. But, uh, you know, we'll talk about it right now because I did watch that as well. So Lethal Weapon 2, Richard Donner, 1989. Now, Lethal Weapon 2, I think, was a vast improvement over one. And... I'm going to give Lethal Weapon 1, I'm going to give that a 7.2, but I'm going to give Lethal Weapon 2, which was funnier, the action was better, it just, it paced better, it just, Lethal Weapon 2 was just a freaking blast, love that film, had so much fun watching it, Joe Pesci, what an addition, it was just, it worked. It worked on every level. Even the stuff that shouldn't have worked, worked. It had no business being this good. So I'm going to give Lethal Weapon 2. I'm sorry, and this is going to sound crazy. I'm going to give Lethal Weapon 2 like an like 8.9, man. That movie was awesome. So Richard Donner was going hard for a minute. The Neon Demon, 2016, directed by Nicholas Winding Refn. Now, I've seen this a few of this dude's films, and I've liked him, like, especially Drive. Drive was great. Um, I like I like a lot of stuff he's done with Gosling. Uh, I think this guy's a pretty good director. I think he's very unique and has an interesting eye and stuff like that. This film was visually beautiful. I love the freaking light, the color play, the lighting choices, you know, the way he shot the film. I love the way it looks. I love the look of this film a lot. It's a big vibe. I really like the soundtrack of this film and the score. Um, filmmaking techniques on 100 in this film. That's that's the main selling point of this movie. I think, you know, if you're a fan of, if you're a cinephile, if you, if you th this film is definitely a visual fun time. But the story itself it's kind of, uh, I don't know. It's okay. The story's kind of, it's kind of flat. Not very layered. Um, it definitely, it takes a horror approach. And the horror approach it takes is weird. Now, there was some stuff I really did like about this. There were some scenes I thought were really good uh, that I really, really liked. Especially between Elle Fanning's character and her kind of like, I guess you would call her like her, her makeup artist slash like mentor type character. They had some stuff going on. I really enjoyed. There was aspects of this film that I did really like, but overall it didn't do it for me like that. And I know a lot of people hate this movie and I know a lot of people love this movie and I'm right in the middle. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was decent, but I, I got to say it didn't, it didn't quite do it for me. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to give this film a 6.2 and I'm going to say I can't I, I don't think I can recommend this to everyone this is for deep horror fans or just people who like to see stuff they don't see a lot in movies because there's definitely a couple things in this movie I've never seen in a film before last but absolutely not least The Doors 1991 directed by Oliver Stone 
Um, this movie is freaking awesome. This movie was great. And of course, this movie is great because Val Kilmer just freaking knocked it out of the park again, man. Val Kilmer, I think, is one of the most underrated actors of all time. He murdered this movie, murdered this role. He was Jim Morrison. He looked like him. He acted like him. He he embodied this character so well. And that's really what carries this film. And I, and I really like a lot of the stuff Oliver Stone put in this film. The concert sequences, they felt real. They felt like real 60s, 70s concerts. They felt like this is how it actually was back then. Concerts and movies look so stylized and like planned a lot of the times. Like this felt like a real concert, real people. There was like the way he shot it, it felt more like a it had a documentary-esque feel when you're watching the concerts. And I and I think this what really makes it work very well on a realistic level. And but there is some problems with this movie, and you know, I'm not gonna give you a review on it. But this is just an overview. I did enjoy this movie a lot. And I think, you know, the problems with it aren't enough to stop this movie from being great. I had a great time with it. I'm going to have to give The Doors solid eight. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I definitely recommend this. for If you're a Doors fan, a Jim Morrison fan, a 60s music fan, a psychedelic fan, absolutely watch this film. If you're a music fan, watch this film. If you're a fan of great acting, watch this film. So, I, yes, I could recommend this to anyone. Guys, I know this ran long. Um, I know I watch a lot of movies. It's kind of insane the amount of movies I watch in a four-week span. Guys, if you made it to the end, thank you so much. Please, might as well hit that like button and that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot, and I super-duper appreciate it. Guys, if there's a film you want me to review or something you want me to go over, let me know. Drop me a comment. I will talk to you guys. I'll talk to everybody who drops me comments. Um, Guys, I'll be back next week, and don't forget the popcorn.